Hey, what up, y'all? Welcome back to the Black Owned Podcast. This is your boy, AD. We got Leo in the building, and we got our guest, special guest, Bab, in the building today. How you guys doing? Hey, Doing man. Good. All right, so we got breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Brandon Cooks has been extended with a two-year extension. Um, reports have come out that he's going to make about, earn about less under, right under $20 million a year. So, you know, I just want to get you guys' takes on it and see what you guys think about it. Oh, man, well, I think it's a good deal. Um, I mean, you know, when we look at some of the crazy contracts that have been thrown out earlier in the offseason, uh, definitely, I mean, if if Kirk got 17, you could get Cooks for under 20. I think that's a definite win. I mean, so mm-hmm. beat the char- beat the uh, Jaguars again in that regard. Um, solid receiver, you know, gives us, you know, flexibility in the draft, you know, and, and just a solid player, you know, uh, a locker room guy, a culture guy, and he just happens to really be the best player on our team right now. You know, I mean, besides Tonsil, best skill position player, right? So, I mean, you know, I think it's a good deal, bro. What you think, bro? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I agree, Leo. Like, it's, it's a great culture fit. Um, obviously a fantastic player um, when he's healthy. Um, one of the best receivers in the league statistically. Uh, it's going to be great for Davis Mills' development, and it's going to be great for any young receivers we bring in. Right, right. Yeah. And I, I, I agree with that as well. Um, he's been a consistent 1,000-yard receiver, um, no matter who's the quarterback. Um, he's, he's done it with multiple quarterbacks, um, so that, that's a positive for him. Um, and the team, and then you, like you said before, Bab, it's just he's there. He can be the mentor to a Nico Collins. Um, you know, if we so happen to draft a rookie receiver, you know, he can be a mentor to him as well as to Sean Hamilton, who we just signed as well. Mm-hmm. So it kind of, you know, solidifies the wide receiver room. Um, I think the only, you know, I'm not even going to say downside. It's not even a downside to it at this point because it still fits the timeline. And it's just a short extension. It's only a two-year extension. And at the end of his extension, he'll he'll still be 30 years old, which would put him in prime position for another contract if he wanted. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, all in all, it's a, it's I feel like it's a great move. Um, it's it's not a wild wow move that I know most Texan fans want, <laughs> but you know, I think the wild wow move at this point would have been the trade cooks mm-hmm. and get a second round pick or something for him. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's about not overthinking it. I think that's what we all been talking about on the space is just not overthinking it and making a smart decision and making a smart move. And I think this is compared to what the free agency was. I think this was one of his one of Nick Casario's smartest moves. Yeah. And I mean, to, to piggyback off of that, bro, like just thinking about like how you said, don't overthink it. Don't you know, he gave himself Nick gave himself the um the opportunity and reason to not reach on a receiver early when we have such pressing needs that just, you know, like we talking about the lifeline of our football team. When we talking about like, you know, the defensive line and the offensive line, why create a bigger need to make you basically have to get a receiver early in this draft, you know, Mm -hmm. unless it's a guy that you really love, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like this is this is great. And then even still, like, even if let's say they do go receiver early, I mean, you don't want to put them in a position where they have to have a thousand yard season or it's a failure. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think it's a great move, man. Uh, just sign them back. Give yourself the, um, the the cushion to to, you know, just sign players that, you know, build the trenches. And, you know, when you go receiver or tight end later, you know, just give just give everybody a a. a just make it easy, you know, for everybody yeah. else, you know. Yeah, and and I think I think they're setting the precedent as far as re-signing talented players or extending talented players. You know, this Cooks extension was coming, whether it be this year or at the end of this year, upcoming NFL season. And now you have, you know, you have the the extension of Titus Howard coming. Mm-hmm. Um, you have the extension of Larry Tunsil coming. Now it kind of gives you an idea of what Nick is doing as far as extending talented players, which is, you know, kind of limited on the team right now as it stands. But, you know, it's the ones you have, you need to take care of and keep them on your team as long as possible. Right. I agree. And I think, you know, 
with extending Brandon Cooks, you're also kind of saying that you're relatively comfortable with your top four receivers. You know, you're bringing in uh, Hamilton, you're bringing in, you have Cooks on the extension, um, you'll have Nico, right? <clears throat> Those three are probably going to play a lot all together, right? And then uh, say they bring in a rookie receiver in the first, you know, three rounds, they're not, like you were saying, AD, going to be forced into action straight away right they're not you're not going to have extremely high expectations for any of these guys you're going to allow that receiver to play at their strengths for their rookie season and continue to expand similar to what they did with nico collins right Mm -hmm. they allowed nico collins to play at the line of scrimmage a lot throwing quick slants using his body for control and then you saw kind of later in the season they're like oh Uh, remember Nico Collins is like over six foot three and they were throwing him jump passes, right? Similar developmental thing happening with either a tight end or a receiver, Mm -hmm. but having your, you know, bell cow uh, wide receiver, who's going to get you over a thousand yards if they're healthy, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's a no brainer. And especially at the cost, like, especially at the price that they got him at. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and just to piggyback on him, he's a healthy player. Brandon Cooks is a healthy player. Now, he's only injury concerns he's had has been concussions, but he hasn't had any issues within, the, I think, the last three years as far as concussions. And he's played just about every game. I think the only games he's missed has been the Texans just holding him out, not injury-related. I think it's, you know, precautionary, but not, you know, truly injury-related. So that's another positive as well, that he's kind of shaking off those concussion, you know, walls that he had in the past. And he's, you know, been productive as well. I think he's had six 1,000-yard seasons in eight years. Yeah, something like that. So, you know, that's, you know, that's almost unheard of, you know, in today's looking, NFL. Looking at his numbers compared to Stephon Diggs is pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. Right. Man. And then it's crazy, yeah. too, to think about the the deal that Diggs just got, right? Then Diggs, mm-hmm. Diggs just got paid, for real, like. Four years, right. ninety-four million, I believe. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, I wouldn't argue Cooks versus Diggs. I mean, that's neither here yeah. nor there. But I mean, for what we need him to be, he he can be that. And I look like I said, like AD said, if it's the timeline. And then at that point, we know that you know you fix the trenches. I think pretty much all of us have been preaching fix the trenches. So like we fix yeah. the trenches this draft. We, you know, we get more lead. Maybe we draft a late round receiver. We get more leeway to maybe draft a receiver earlier next year, and then mm-hmm. things get more solid. Maybe even earlier in the next year, and then you know we're at that point where we can let Cooks go if we really want to. So I mm-hmm. feel like it's just, it's just, this is a, a. I mean, this is a real character building time, and I mean, what better way to to than to get a guy that is cool with the front office. You know, I mean, has just been a mentor for all the young players. And I mean, you know, regardless if you win or lose, you know, he's going to come in and work hard every day. And I mean, that's great. That's that's the only thing we need, you know. And I mean, we all know that, you know, I think I've seen people automatically once the deal came out, oh, tw- 20 mil for cooks, you know, and it's just it's bullshit. You know, mm-hmm. uh, at this point, I mean, the best thing that Nick Casario has done is to not Oh, try to fix everything at one time. And I mean, I think that, you know, that's all he can do, you know, mm-hmm. I don't feel one, like, like it, you know, one of the things I think that gets overlooked a lot with Brandon cooks is, you know, we didn't see maybe the maximum production year that we could have had. Cause we were developing a rookie quarterback uh, mm-hmm. basically out of necessity. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know if you guys like can remember straight off the top of your head when we started the season, with uh, who is our quarterback? Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. Tyrod Taylor was just like Cooks is down there somewhere. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you remember that? I mean, he was just. He, Ty, we thought Tyrod Taylor was taking us to the promised land. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> Cooks, Cooks was killing those like double teams, triple teams, mm-hmm. jump balls, anything. Mm-hmm. And if, if you can kind of give Mills that blanket or that that reliability, oh my goodness! Like, mm-hmm. like fantastic. Sign me up, right? Right. Yeah. And and I think going back to your point, he had like 400 yards in the first two games or something like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and the thing about this as well is that Nick and Lovey have been preaching as well with their players is that they want people who want to play for the Texans. They want people who yeah. 
you know, who are going to be here and, and support what they're trying to do. And I think Brandon Cooks has been that type of guy that supports, um, you know, the Texans. He, I think he likes this organization. And I think he likes the environment. I think he, you know, appreciates what they're trying to do and understands what they're trying to do. Right. And so he, um, for sure, fits the culture. I know mm -hmm. we talk about that. Mm -hmm. And I think he is a culture builder. Mm -hmm. um, and he is somebody that you, we, you know, it's kind of, we are saying the same thing over and over again. He's somebody that you're, they're going to need to develop, to help develop the culture yeah. as well as the players on the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, as far as like, I guess, you know, wins, you know, I don't think anyone, anyone thinks this is going to turn us into a 10 win team. But, <laughs> but this is something that down the road, you know, will, you know, I guarantee you that all the young players, you know, when we are in a better situation, they'll mm -hmm. be happy that we kept cooks and retained cooks, and, you know, and have, you know, a big brother in the locker room and someone that they could admire and uh, aspire to to, you know, help motivate them to, to be like, you know, because, I mean, the facts is, bro, you know what I'm saying, when you're 21, 22 years old, you see this guy that just got paid 20 million, you know, that's good, you know, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, I mean, yeah. what else can you ask it, for? It, it, it's, and, and it shows, like you said, the younger players that if you play well and you come in and do your job and perform, that you're going to get paid, you're going to get taken care of. Right, right, I mean, right. you know, they've, they've shown that, so I think that's a good move by Nick is that he's not afraid to pay the players that deserve it mm -hmm. um, because I don't see any crazy, I don't think we've had any crazy extensions. I know people want to harp on the um, Eric Murray mm -hmm. the structure, but that was, you know, that was, to me, that was just pushing money down the road um, and just to kind of give Eric Murray, you know, just to see what he still has because he did play pretty decent at the end of the year last year. Um, not to get off the Brandon Cooks topic, but, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, any other thoughts or final thoughts on the Brandon Cooks? Nah, bro, I think we hit it out the park, y'all. All right. So for this small little segment, you know, we'll end it. This is the Black on Podcast, and we'll see you guys next time. This is AD. All right, this is Leo, and we got Bab. You know, thank you for this coming, man. Bab. You All know, right. ho hopefully frequent guests, you know, and from now on, you know, we keep on trucking. So um, and with that being said, you know, thanks and we'll see you next time. For sure.